Hey folks, David A. Cox here with Tech Talk America, and today I put together a class all about Keynote for Mac, which is of course Apple's alternative to Microsoft PowerPoint. So if you need to put together a dynamic presentation, whether it's for work purposes, for a school project, or to convince mom and dad to get you that dog you've always wanted, this class should help you. Keynote for Mac, coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hello everyone and welcome to the class. I have posted time codes to each section down below in the video description, so if you would like to skip ahead at any point, you're welcome to do so. If you like this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, and also hopefully you'll leave me some feedback down below in the comment section. And if you want to be one of those fans who really goes the extra mile, you can totally make my day and send me a little piece of old school snail mail. By the way, quick shout out to one of my fans, John Gotch. Your note really made my day. Thank you so much. Without any further ado, let's get to the class and switch to my Mac. When you first open Keynote, you'll be brought to the template chooser. And if you look here at the top, you'll see that you can choose between a standard or a wide template. If you've seen either of my tutorials on either pages or numbers, you know that normally I end up going into some of my favorite templates and show off their key features. But in this case, all of these templates are pretty much the exact same other than the backgrounds and the default fonts. And all of those, of course, can be swapped out later. So I'd argue that the best template to start with is probably the simple gradient template. This is also, by the way, what Apple uses when they give their keynote addresses. The first feature that I want to point out is the add slide button here at the top left. As you can see, this template contains 12 different slide layouts, which include various combinations of bullet points, text, and photos. From a creative standpoint, I'd suggest that when you start the process of putting together a keynote presentation, that you first start by writing your script out using pages. Then, as you go through your speech, figure out what type of slide layout will best complement what you're discussing at that point in time. You also want to make sure that you have a nice variety. So, for example, you wouldn't want to have three slides in a row that are all bullet points. By mixing it up a bit, you're more likely to hold your audience's attention. From here, I want to go over the items that you see at the top menu bar, but to keep the pacing moving on this video, I am going to purposefully skip some items. The first tab, here at the top left, contains your view options, and if you're going to be giving your keynote presentation in front of a live audience, I would suggest that you turn on the presenter notes feature. When most people give a keynote presentation, while the person who is giving the talk is usually facing the audience, Many times, they will have a monitor or a computer screen that the audience cannot see, which contains notes and cues to assist them with the presentation. By turning on this feature, you'll see this little extra added space at the bottom where you can type in those types of reminders or notes. There are several other presenter tools that I am going to be showing you a little bit later in this class. As you can see here, right now I'm in navigator mode, which means that I have a little preview window over here on the side of all of my different slides. One trick that you should know is that if you ever need to reorder your slides, you can simply drag them and drop them into the order that you want. One of the latest features in Keynote is called Keynote Live. This feature makes it so that everyone in your audience, either in the flesh or tuning in online, can see your Keynote presentation right on their Mac, iOS device, or really any device thanks to iCloud.com. There are several ways that you can invite people to view your keynote presentation. This includes through email, you can send it out through a message, a standard hyperlink, you can airdrop it to your audience, or you can even share it to social media services like Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. By the way, you won't see those last few options listed on my screen only because this is a demo account. We're going to skip over adding tables, charts, text boxes, and shapes because I think they're fairly self-explanatory. But one thing that I did want to touch on is adding media to your keynote presentation. This can, of course, include music, sound effects, voiceover, photos, or video. In the case of video, you might want to double-check your preferences for keynote just to make sure that the video becomes part of your keynote document. That way, if you ever have to throw your keynote onto something like a flash drive all of the media is self-contained inside the project. You also might want to consider turning on this feature to optimize the media so that it's iOS compatible. 
If you want to add photos, as you see here, we have two different options. You can either add just one photo or, what I recommend, add an image gallery. That way you can swipe through multiple photos. There are two ways to get your photos into this Keynote presentation. You can either drag them and drop them in, or the other option is to click this little icon down here at the bottom right, which will launch a Finder window. Now here's a little trick that's a good thing to know. Whenever this type of situation happens to you, you can scroll down on the left-hand column here in this Finder window and click on Photos. Then from there, you can see your entire Photos library. If I may make a quick suggestion, if you are looking to have a lot of photos in your Keynote presentation, you might want to start off by organizing those photos in the Photos app by placing them into an album. Also on the same topic, if you ever want just someone to work with you to help you organize your photos, that happens to be one of my most popular topics uh, when it comes to private lessons. And just know there are no stupid questions whenever you're working with me. If you'd like to find out more information about a private lesson, you can find everything on my website at techtalkamerica.com slash private lessons. I want to clarify something about music that a lot of people find very confusing here in Keynote. If I go through media and add a soundtrack, that song will only play for that particular slide. If you want to add music to your entire presentation, that is actually over here in Document Options. And from there, you'd go into the Audio tab and then click the little plus button at the bottom to add a track. You can either have this play one song after the other, or if you want, you can change it to Loop and it'll play the same song over and over. The next two buttons are Comment and Collaborate, and if you ever need to work with someone to put together your presentation, this feature makes it really easy for multiple people to work on the same document, potentially at the same time. You could even work with other people on a Windows PC or a Google Chromebook if they just simply access the document through iCloud.com. We're going to spend a little bit of time getting to know these buttons at the top right. Let's start with Format. A lot of these options will change based on whatever it is that you are clicked on at the time. But when I'm not clicked on anything, as you can see here, we can easily change the type of slide that we're working on. So if I'm typing out some text and then suddenly I realize, hmm, this might look a little bit better as bullet points, I can do that. Right now we're working with a pretty basic black and white gradient background, but what if you wanted to bring a little color into your project? For that, check out the Gradient Fill and especially the Advanced Gradient Fill options. Now, don't get me wrong, gradients are wonderful, but I tend to think that they're best used sparingly. In general, I tend to think that the best type of background for your slide is actually a photo. And for that reason, I would like to take a moment to highlight a feature that I encourage you to check out, which is the Advanced Image Fill option. What this allows you to do is to pick a custom photo to use as a background, and then it will add a tint so that your text stands out. If you want the text to stand out even more, here's another trick. Let's highlight some text, and if we go over here into the Format menu and over to Text, you'll notice that we have a little gear icon right here next to our bold, italic, underline, and strike through options. As you can see right here, by checking this little box, we can add a tiny shadow. That just helps the text stand out a little bit more. I want to now show you several aspects of animation, including actions and transitions, and we're also going to end up talking a little bit about masking. When you want to simply add a transition to go from one slide to the next, just make sure you're not clicked on anything on your project at the time. Then go over to Animate at the top right, and if you want to see a preview of any of these animations, just click the little preview button next to each transition. These animations have become a lot more fun over the years, and while we're not going to cover all of them, one of the most popular ones, which we are going to cover, is called Magic Move. If you've ever seen Apple's keynote presentations, they use this effect all the time. It's when you take either text, an object, an image, or a combination of those, and then scale them and move them to a different part of the slide as other text usually comes and goes. I find this is a great effect whenever you have something like a chapter title and then you want to move it to one of the corners. Let's go over how to use Magic Move right now. To do this, first figure out what it is that you want to transition. Then just secondary click on the slide over here in the navigator and select Duplicate. 
Now we can go to the new slide, resize everything that we need, change the positioning, and when you're done, go back to the previous slide and here under transitions, select magic move. Let's see how that looks when we preview it. Another cool trick that I wanted to show you is that now you can have shapes interact with your photos as a mask. Let me show you an example. Recently, I had to take some headshots to update some of my older YouTube cover images. And while I had a green screen behind me at the time during this photo shoot, I do want you all to know that you do not actually need that in order to recreate this effect. Any color will do because ultimately we're just gonna delete the background. So as long as the background color doesn't match what you're wearing, you should be good to go. To do this, I'm going to select my photo and then up here in the top menu bar, I'm gonna go into format, then image, and finally mask with shape. And for now, I'll just add an oval. So now I can resize this oval and change up the placement of my head. And then when I click done, everything else will be deleted. Now to delete the background, I'm gonna show you how to use a little tool which back in the day used to require Adobe Photoshop. The name of this tool is called Instant Alpha and it's located here in the Format tab under Image. So I'll just click Instant Alpha and now I'm gonna go back to the image and click on the color that I want to delete. You can then drag your cursor up or down to increase or decrease the sensitivity. And keep in mind, you don't have to nail it in one swoop. You can go back and do this several times until your background is fully deleted. Another effect I wanted to show you, which is very popular these days, is how to add the thin white outline around your subject. To do this, we'll stay here in the format menu, but we're gonna switch over to the style tab. This option that you see right here at the bottom left will add a thin white outline around your subject. And if you want to increase the size of that outline a little bit, you can bump it up right over here on the right hand side. Going back to animation, I want to also talk about the build in and build out features. These are fun little ways to introduce images, bullet points, and other objects into your presentation. So let's say on this slide, I have three bullet points that I want to have animate onto the screen one at a time. To do this, I can type out all three bullet points in advance and then go over here to animate at the top right, then go to build in, and now I can start to figure out what type of effect to add. For now, I'll just use a lens flare. The last step is we need to go here into the settings and change the delivery from all at once to buy bullet point. The build out feature works pretty much how you'd expect, but frankly, I'd probably just use a transition instead. Oh, and by the way, if you're not sure which of your slides have transitions on them, you can tell if you look over here in the navigator, you see that little blue corner? That is the visual indicator for slides that already have a transition applied to them. There are two resources that I wanted to give shout outs to in this video. One is free, the other is a paid service. The first resource is a little website by the name of uihere.com. They have tons of free photos, graphics, arrows, and icons. Just be aware that you're only allowed to download a few images a day, so if you're in a pinch, it may not be the best solution. The other resource, which I do personally subscribe to, is called Envato Elements. This is one of those services where you can either sign up for a single month or month to month. Their assets include everything from music, stock video, sound effects, product mockups, and there's even an entire section devoted to presentations. While they don't really make any mention of Keynote, you should know Keynote will open Microsoft PowerPoint presentations. So if you're a bit challenged when it comes to layout design, this can be a phenomenal tool. If you'd like to check it out, I have a link to Envato Elements down in the description of this video. Hey folks, we've got a lot more to go over. We'll be right back after this brief commercial break. The next feature that I want to show you is how to customize the display settings for the presenter screen. To do this, let's switch to my Mac. Let's go to the top menu bar where it says Play and select Customize Presenter Display. As you can see here, we can customize the screen to either show or hide the current slide, the next slide, presenter notes, the current time, and a separate timer which can either be used for counting up or counting down. 
When it comes to crafting your presenter notes, I'd encourage you to keep it to just simple bullet points. That way, you spend more time looking at your audience rather than your monitor. If you want to export your keynote presentation as a video, there are two different ways to do it, and which method is best for you really depends on how you're planning to deliver your keynote. The first method is to go here to the File menu and go to Export To, and then select Movie. The self-playing method is going to be the best solution for people who are not actually giving a live presentation with live audio. I know several realtors who will use this feature in their offices so that they have a monitor that's facing outward and it just plays a continuous slideshow. This is one of the ways that you could accomplish that. The other method is to actually record your keynote manually. For that, what we'll do is go here to where it says play at the top menu bar and select record slideshow. When you're ready to begin, just click the little red record button at the bottom left. I'll now quickly advance through this fake slideshow just so we can get through it. And when you're done, you're going to click that red record button one more time. Now, when I go back to that same location, which is file, export to movie, you'll notice that now we have the other option available, set the playback to slideshow recording. Also, make sure that the resolution is set to 1080p for the best clarity. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this class, I hope you'll consider hitting that little like button. Leave me a comment down below. And keep in mind, if you'd ever like to take a private lesson with me, that is something that I do. You can find out all of the information on my website at techtalkamerica.com slash private lessons. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.